Good evening again, everyone. It's great to see all of you here tonight. Uh, thank you for joining us. So um, just to introduce myself, uh, I'm Joyce, and together with my colleagues, we run the StackX DevRel work here in GovTech. So um, before we start, I'd like to run through a couple of house rules that are up on the screen now. So uh, first, please note that this webinar is being recorded, and uh, we ask that your questions be kept to the topics presented today to keep our session meaningful. Uh, please feel free to ask and upvote questions throughout the webinar via the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen. Uh, but do avoid posting questions in our main chat uh, because our speakers wouldn't be able to take questions from there. So um, the, program, the program tonight, I'm just, sorry, is something that I'm sure all of us would be very keen to hear. So um, the NDI or National Digital Identity and GovTech's uh, health search teams will show how SingPass is a very powerful tool that makes use of technologies to make uh, lives easier and better. We also have guest speakers from Assurity Trusted Solutions and Accredify who will discuss and present uh, practical use cases in healthcare, which is an area that is really increasingly receiving a lot of attention. Uh, we'll also have a Q&A session as usual, where you can ask our speakers anything at all about their fields of expertise. So um, like what we said, please do feel free to submit your burning questions in the Q&A panel at any time during the session. So um, before we invite our speakers to share, here's a very quick intro on us for our new attendees. So GovTech is about 3,000 strong now. So our work can be broadly classified into three areas, um, products, services, and cyber and governance. Uh, for the product side, we have over 700 developers who implement products for um, the WOG, uh, which is whole of government, and develop strategic national projects. We also have capability centers in digital services, um, centers in IoT, data science and AI, uh, cybersecurity and infrastructure. So um, the products team also manages the WOG infrastructure from our move to commercial cloud to data centers, to um, the issuance of devices to all public offices. Then uh, the services group is the biggest of the three, making up more than half of our, our staff strength. So they play a very important role in managing technology in over 60% of government agencies in Singapore. And uh, last but definitely not least, the cyber and governance group. So GovTech is the sector lead for cybersecurity in the government and um, the chief information security officer sits in GovTech. So to ensure that all the work that we do is safe and secure, our governance group sets ICT policies and guidelines across the government. Uh, to engage and connect more with our developers, uh, engineers and techies like yourself, GovTech formed the StackX community in 2019. So uh, if you have not joined yet, please scan the QR code uh, on screen. I'll also be sharing the link for joining uh, in our chat as well. So what we do in the StackX community is to share the latest information on deep dive uh, sessions with public sector and industry professionals who share on a wide range of um, tech and tech related topics. So uh, updates on all of our latest meetups will also be shared with our community members. So uh, definitely this platform is a great way to stay informed uh, about GovTech's product and engineering news. Uh, I'm sure you'll also discover that um, the Singapore Government Developer Portal contains uh, content that's very useful. Uh, the link will also be shared later in the chat. So uh, visit us and discover the products GovTech has developed. This include uh, NDI, API Gateway, DevOps products, and um, documentation that you can try out. So um, you can also check out our community page where you'll find um, videos on demands of uh, past webinars and blogs by our GovTech teams. So um, the developer portal or dev portal uh, is in its beta phase. So we ask for your patience as info is onboarded. Um, to fully improve the dev portal for everyone, uh, we would really, really love to hear from you. So um, you can scan the QR code on screen now as well to help us with a short poll. Uh, as usual, the link will also be shared in the chat later. So um, during this period, we are really keeping our fingers crossed that um, the COVID-19 situation continues to improve. So um, we are also continuing our support for the tech community and have close to 400 positions available for contract and perm. So uh, whether you're a software engineer, a DevOps engineer or BA, you should be able to find some interesting roles here. So um, if you do know of any friends who may be keen or um, have been displaced during this time, uh, please do share this with them. Now, please join me in welcoming Ang Mui Kim, the Chief Executive Officer for Assurity Trusted Solutions. Uh, Mui Kim has been instrumental in bringing about business innovation and transformation in both the public and private sectors. 
Uh, she's part of the GovTech le senior leadership team uh, before she was posted to Assurity Trusted Solutions. So um, we can please. Thank you, Joyce. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for making times for this evening's Tech Meetup. Don't you wish that we could all be on site right now exchanging ideas and sharing experiences over food and drinks? Well, the reason why we cannot be on site is also the topic of this evening Meetup, healthcare. We are here tonight to talk about healthcare and more importantly, to spark new ideas about delivering better digital services and remote care services using technology. Not just any technology, but SingPass APIs and GovTech's open attestation framework for health certs. The pandemic outbreak has really changed the way healthcare services are delivered and highlighted the value of telehealth as both a tool of necessity as well as of innovation. As the appointed National Certification Authority and National Digital Identity Industry Engagement Office of GovTech, a surety trusted solution is supposed to have to play a pivotal role in the provision of digital health and telemedicine services in Singapore. Since early this year, we have helped health need household names such as Frontier Healthcare and White Coat Medical on board to the National Digital Identity Platform. Patients now can log in seamlessly to their apps by tapping on the SingPass QR code and have medical services delivered at their fingertips. Registration is made easy with a few clips with my info. Gone are the days of endless form filling. We are delighted to have with us tonight a credify one of our first companies in private sector in Singapore to integrate with SingPass Lock-in. They will showcase their new employee portal, Accredify Start, which is a digital app for staff to submit and track their COVID results. The app is integrated with SingPass to provide a secure lock-in experience. Accredify has also collaborated with GovTech to co-create temper-proof digital COVID medical records also known as health certs. My colleagues Poon and Barry will share more about SingPass APIs and GovTech's open attestation framework for health cert. In closing, I would like to encourage you to work with us to co-create better digital health and telemedicine services using SingPass APIs. I hope you will find this evening program interesting and eye-opening. I look forward to a vibrant exchange of ideas in the next one and a half hours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rikin, for the really great introduction to our session tonight. So um, after this opening, uh, may we invite Poon to talk about how SingPass can empower businesses. Poon, the floor mm -hmm. is yours. Thank you, Joyce. Uh, thank you, Mukin, for the opening. Good evening, everyone, one and all. Uh, welcome to our forum here. Uh, my name is Poon. I head the Industry Engagement Office uh, led by Mui Kim. Uh, my role here together with the team is to not just shout about what SingPass, our national digital identity, can do for businesses like your organization, but also to bring on board you know, government agencies and businesses you know, on board our, this national digital platform. What I'll do is quickly give an introduction. Right? I will showcase you know, our API, our SingPass API products, and more importantly, how can organizations you know, benefit and digitally empower themselves with our SingPass APIs? As you know, Smart Nation is about harnessing technology to the fullest. It's about creating opportunities for innovation. But ultimately, it is to improve the lives of everyone residing in Singapore. And a cornerstone of realizing this Smart Nation vision is SingPass, our national digital identity. You see, SingPass is not just that digital mobile app. You know, it's not that mobile, it's not just that mobile app that gives you access to 700 over government services and a whole host of private sector services. It's not just that mobile app that contains your digital NIC. But more importantly, SingPass is also a digital enabler. Why we say that? Because what the government has here, right, is, you know, we have, a, a, from the different government agencies, we have all that information. And on top of that, what the government has here is an established and robust infrastructure for authentication. When we couple these two key components together, we've now built a platform, a platform that's available 
for your business to integrate with, to tap, uh, to digitally empower yourselves. What I'll do is quickly outline the six ready to in integrate API products that your businesses can pick and choose from. But before I go there, the gateway to all these products and services from a user standpoint will be simply through the person's SingPass account or SingPass mobile app. The very first SingPass API product has been out for close to four years is Mindful. Essentially, Mindful allows for any SingPass user to authorize the extraction of data themselves to be shared with specific organizations to facilitate specific transactions. For example, you know, facilitating that seamless customer registration uh, for telemedication. Later on, I'll showcase uh, just a few of our early adopters, right? For that seamless credit card application, loan application, so on and so forth. You know, later on, you will see uh, a use case that can better illustrate its benefit and more importantly, how your organization can quickly make use of my info. SingPass authentication, uh, something that everyone is uh, very familiar with, you know, you know, traditionally used by all government services like CPF and IRAS to authenticate their end users. Two years ago, we've extended the use of SingPass authentication for private sector use. To date, we have more than 100 over private sector services offering that SingPass passwordless login experience to their end customers. Just to name a few, Singapore Exchange, OCBC, you know, credentials, income, so on and so forth. Later on, I have a short video to really show you just how easy it is. For a face-to-face -face scenario, with, this, with a simple integration of our SingPass backend, you know, any organization uh, can verify you know, your users you know, at customer contact centers or at roadshows. Long gone are the days where you need to physically sign documents. Again, with a simple integration of our backend, your company, your organization can potentially offer digital signing. In any document that is signed with SingPass, a digital signature stands up in the court of law. And for more sensitive transactions, again, a simple API call, you can trigger off our face verification service as a form of step up authentication. Right? And lastly, with remote authorization, yeah. Your organization can possibly you know, reach out, proactively reach out to your end customers to seek specific authorization for specific transactions. So with my info, you will see here, it is not just a simple you know, consent platform, a data sharing platform, but again, what you will see here as one of our early adopters or rather one of our early adopters from the telemedication, teleconsultancy uh, sector, this is SpeedDoc. You know, you know just, Using SpeedDoc users mindful to seamlessly onboard to acquire online customers, right? What SpeedDocs offer here as part of their registration, you know, instead of you know painstaking filling up all those details manually uh, via the online form, they offer another option, uh, which is the which is the hassle-free form filling through Mindful. So all the user needs to do is click on Mindful. The user is redirected to the Mindful portal. Before the user sees this. He's authenticated by asking part, so we know exactly who he is. Then we'll ask for his explicit consent. You consent sharing the following information with SpeedDoc for the purpose of patient registration. If the user clicks, I agree, the user is then redirected back to SpeedDoc. And when the user scrolls down, you will see that all those information that is consented to, is already pre-populated on SpeedDoc end, thereby facilitating that seamless registration, that seamless patient registration. Along with SpeedDoc, other organizations from the different sectors, especially now that you see you know, from the various banks, the financial institutes, the insurers, all using Mindful to facilitate different use cases. For example, you know, bank account creation, credit card application, loan application, so on and so forth. And we're happy to share that to date with more than 600 over private sector services, you know, ranging from the different industry uh, sectors, from your securities, banking, insurers, you know, charities, so on and so forth. And of course, healthcare something that we are seeing, you know, the take up really very encouraging. So again, what I want to show you here is just some highlights of the kind of data that's available uh, on my info for sharing. Uh, we have here a snapshot of the contact details and what are the contact details and personal details? For example, your NIC, your FIN number, your, na your name, your address, all this information uh, from the various government sources, for example, ICA or MOM. Right. And depending on use case, uh, we have contact information, we have you know, employment information from CPF, from IRAS, income information, property information. So it really depends on your use case. And we are confident uh, that, again, uh, we can cater to many of your use cases. 
So I'll quickly move on to our next product, which is simply SingPass authentication or login. I think we're also familiar with SingPass login. Whenever you access any government services, IRA, CPF, you're redirected to the SingPass portal to authenticate yourself first uh, using the SingPass username and password followed by the 2FA and SMS OTP. Uh, two years ago, we've introduced the SingPass QR login used in, in conjunction with the SingPass mobile app to facilitate that passwordless login experience. And what do I mean by that? I have a short video here to demonstrate you know, a passwordless login flow on our private sector, one of our early adopters. This is the Prudential customer portal. On the left-hand side is the Prudential user ID and password. On the right-hand side is the SingPass QR, which is embedded on the Prudential customer portal. And you know, just like any other Prudential customer, I always, whenever I try to log in to the Prudential site, I always forget my user ID and password. I end up resetting. But now the SingPass QR login, all I simply need to do is open up my SingPass mobile app, scan the QR, consent logging into the Prudential site. And because SingPass uses the phone's biometrics, in this case, Touch ID, you can see this is a straight through, fast, convenient login experience. Fast, convenient, but again, the above all, secure. Why? Because this whole flow encompasses both the first factor authentication, which is what you have, the SingPass mobile, and the second factor authentication is what you are, Face ID or Touch ID. And for all our partners, you know, um, with, with, a, with a mobile app, with a native mobile app, the same experience is also available. And what we have here is the AIA mobile app. And as you can see here, and the SingPass QR login is chosen. All the user needs to do is tap on the QR. The SingPass web seamlessly comes up, go through the same authentication, the same passwordless flow. And once authenticated, the SingPass web goes to the background and the AIA comes up and that seamless login flow. We're also happy to share that, you know, uh, White Coat also recently came on board, not just on Mindful, but also offering the SingPass login feature, that passwordless login feature, meaning to say that, you know, all their online customers can seamlessly log on to White Coat Portal, you know, to make, you know, teleconsulting appointments, so on and so forth. And really the benefits here in terms of user experience is passwordless. Uh, a lot of our partners are seriously considering to sunset their existing login to solely depend on SingPass to, to you know, keep operating costs low, uh, but really, you know, what we have here is, you know, with the SingPass login, um, potentially your organization will have ready access to all SingPass users, right? And really, you know, in a, in a space of two years, we have more than 100 over services already uh, using this SingPass authentication. Really, the goal here is, you know, with one single digital identity, the SingPass ID, uh, with SingPass, you know, a straight through login to not just 700 over government, government services, but a whole host of private sector services. And with our passwordless login feature, everyone, including you know, the uncle and aunties, will no longer have to remember their OCBC password, their Great Eastern password, you know, or their potential password, because with our passwordless flow, it's a straight through login. So this is something that we hope that you consider you know, as part of you know, your digital transformation for your organization. And quickly moving on, you know, for face-to-face -face scenario, you know, the, the day will come where things are a bit better, you know, and when organizations can start to do roadshows or even at customer contact centers, you know, uh, just one example of how, you know, you can verify your customers instead of having, you know, them to bring out their IC or any identification document with a simple integration or backend, you know, through your kiosk, right, or devices and show a QR. All the user needs to do is scan the QR using the SingPass mobile app, and this person is seamlessly verified the kind of data that is required. So what you see at the scanning of QR, the, the NFC version, the form factor, that is also readily available. Uh, so to date, you know, quite a number of organizations are already using our Verify feature, including the various polyclinics in Singapore uh, to register their customers. Uh, so in the healthcare sector, real estate, and even charities for donor registration. And quickly moving on, another one that is really exciting that we recently launched six months ago, which is Sign with SingPass. Uh, allow me to give you a quick a bit of background here. Uh, prior to Sign with SingPass, which, which is a digital signature, a lot of us would have experienced some form of electronic signing. So, you know, when your insurance agent comes to you on his iPad, he will ask you, please review this document. And when you are asked to sign, when you use your finger or stylus to sign, strictly speaking, that is only an electronic signature. The problem with electronic signatures, it comes with the same level of assurance as that of a web signature. And again, you know, so what's the big deal? Uh, so the problem comes when there's a dispute. 
assuming that a, a, a customer signed, you know, electronically. Three days later, you know, with the insurance company, he signed electronically. Three days later, he, he disputes, no, I didn't sign this document. When we go to the court of law, the onus is actually on the insurance company, the document provider, to prove to the courts that so-and-so actually signed this document, right? They need to dig out physical evidence or digital evidence. So really, you know, uh, this is, this gives rise to a need for a form of signature that provides not just higher assurance, but it is recognized by the Singapore Court of Law. Uh, so we're happy to say that, you know, with national digital identity, uh, with our various infrastructure, we're happy to share that we can now provide a form of signature, signed with SingPass, a digital signature that comes with that level of assurance. Before I explain how we do that, allow me to share with you the user experience of sign with SingPass. Uh, now, you know, in relation to the earlier scenario, now a different insurance company now already integrated with sign with SingPass. And when the insurance comes to you very similarly, he will display that insurance policy to you on his MacBook, right? And when you're about to sign, once you've understood all the, the whole document, when you're about to sign, all the user needs to do is click on the signing portion, a QR code comes up, he scans using his SingPass mobile app, he consents signing that document, face ID, and the end of this flow is a digitally signed PDF. What happens in the back end is two things. Number one, through the SingPass mobile app, we have authenticated the person. We know exactly who it is. And number two, because he's consented signing the document, which is why in the back end, we have binded his digital identity with this document, resulting in a digitally signed PDF that comes with legal presumptions of authenticity, meaning to say that it is not just recognized by the Singapore Court of Law, but it's non-reputable. What does that all mean? Uh, so again, in relation to the earlier, earlier scenario where we paint, now, you know, now, uh, for example, you know, another person signs uh, this, with this insurance company using his SingPass web. He signs a SingPass. Three days later, he disputes, no, I didn't sign. I didn't sign. This is not my signature. When we go to the court of law, the reverse happens. Now the onus is on the disputer to prove to the court why he didn't sign this document. Because all the judge needs to do is to open up this PDF. And once he open up this PDF with any PDF reader, on the very top, you will see a green ribbon to show that this, the contents of this document has not been tampered with and therefore still valid. And all the judge needs to scroll down, needs to do is to scroll down. He will see that this document is signed by so-and-so using the SingPass mobile app. Uh, the judge can double click on this and within the PDF properties, they will show all the details. So-and-so signed this document at what time, at what date, using the NDI digital signing certs. So really this document becomes a, a self-verifying document. It contains all the necessary information to prove that so-and-so actually signed this document. So we're happy to share that, you know, your organization, just like any other private organization, uh, can come on board, uh, sign with SingPass, and you have actually two options. The first option, which we're happy to share that sign with SingPass is already pre-integrated with existing signing partners, existing document management uh, partners. For example, DocuSign, Adobe, the Doco, and the list goes on. This is one option that you can consider. You see, a lot of these uh, signing solution providers, one may ask, you know, why are they you know, interested to offer sign with SingPass? You will know that DocuSign and Adobe They've been players in this area for so many years. So they specialize in not just managing the documents, but also providing signing solutions. But their signing solutions, again, is that of an electronic signature. So they're happy to also offer sign with SingPass a digital signature. I uh, meaning to say that, you know, their clients, DocuSign can readily extend sign with SingPass to their clients. In fact, later on, you will see some of their clients already switched on sign with SingPass and a lot of their end customers all their end customers are already using sign with SingPass to sign some documents. So that's one option. The second option, again, if your, organ if your organization uh, feels that, you know, uh, there's, um, there's no need to go through a partner, you can consider directly integrating with sign with SingPass. All our technical specs are also available on our portal uh, for your reference. Uh, this is something that, you know, if you're interested, again, we can follow up with you. So just some examples of the people that came on board uh, signed with SingPass over the past six months. Uh, we have our local property firm ERA, the insurance firm AIA, and most recently UOB. So in the coming months, you will see more and more organizations offering signed with SingPass. And who knows, maybe the next insurance policy that you'll be signing, you'll be using your SingPass mobile app. And quickly with face verification, a biometrics service that is again 
readily available for all organizations to tap on. Assuming that you know you have a use case that requires a, a step-up authentication, another form of authentication because it is considered sensitive, critical, or high value. So with a simple API call, all you need to do is insert in the person's identifier. Our API will trigger off the front-facing camera of your mobile device, of your laptop, or even your kiosk. We'll capture a sequence of photos with the person's NIC that you've fed us and the captured photos will go to our back end. And again, our back end is made up of you know, biometrics information, uh, data from ICA and MOM. So we'll verify against that database. We'll compare that captured photo versus the extracted photo from our database. And we'll return a confidence score to our partners. And then you can then decide, you know, based on that score and our recommendation, you allow this person to carry out that sensitive transaction. So really, our face verification service comes with also liveness check fraud detection. So to better illustrate this, I'm just showing you just one example, one example of how face verification can be used. Uh, you will know that our face verification technology and service is already offered to not just private organizations, but also government agencies. And specifically, you know, we have uh, offered this service to the customer contact centers at CPF, IRA, state courts. And what you see here is People's Association. At the many self-service kiosks, um, where we allow members of public to access any government service. We have replaced the SingPass authentication with just face verification here. And this is really positioned for older folks who forgot their SingPass password, who didn't bring their SingPass mobile app. And all they need to do when trying to access this particular government service, uh, when they click on SingPass login, instead of keying in their username and password, uh, what, what they were asked to do is to key in their NIC or scan their NIC, consent carrying out face verification. And what you see here, the purpose of the flashing light is actually for detection, to make sure that this is a real person because that flashing light, when it bounces off real skin, there's a certain reflective index. So now that we confirm that he's a real person and not wearing a latex mask, we go to our back end to check, is he indeed who he says he is? If so, uh, then this person can continue with that particular transaction. So what you're seeing here is the face verification web portals, right? We're happy to share that, you know, DBS Bank, nine months ago, came on board using this exact same service on their mobile apps to facilitate the registration of their existing customers to online banking accounts. And most recently, OCBC Bank using our face verification service on their ATM machines so that all their customers who didn't bring their ATM cards, they need not worry with face verification, but they can access certain ATM functions, for example, balance inquiry. In the coming months, this will be, this will be extended to even more ATM functions. So really, this is something that is really exciting. So again, if you're interested, please feel free to reach out to us. Later at the end of the presentation, we have a QR code for you to register your interests. And lastly, with remote authorization, something that we are about to launch. Uh, so with remote authorization, unlike all the earlier services that you saw, which are all user-initiated, with remote authorization, it is the other way around. You as an organization can trigger off a authorization request to your end customers to seek authorization for a specific transaction. In this case, you know, again, just an example, Singapore Exchange, you know, through, through our SingPass mobile app, sending a push notification to that specific uh, customer of yours, you will seek you know, authorization for a particular transaction. And this example here is to change a uh, bank account on your, for SGX. So if the user, customer uh, clicks authorize, uh, what we will do in the back end, we will send a signed payload back you know, to our partners. And this proves two things. Number one, this person is authenticated by a sync pass. And number two, he authorized this particular transaction. So what we have here is actually presentless customer consent, simplifying workflows. You know, potential use cases can include you know, delegation, you know, uh, verification, so on and so forth. So really, just to quickly summarize, what we have here is you know, a range of products that you can pick and choose from, but really to help you, know, you digitally empower you know, your services, especially when it comes to online customer acquisition. With my info, we help you seamlessly register new customers. And when your new, new customers are registered uh, with SingPass login, they can seamlessly log on to your, uh, to your portal on a perpetual basis. For face-to-face -face scenario, that's verify. For more sensitive transactions, you can consider you know, remote authorization, digital signing, and face verification. So I come to the end of my uh, presentation. Uh, what we have here is a QR code. Uh, if you are interested, uh, please scan this QR code and later on you can fill up 
this simple form to register your interest. And there after that, uh, my, my team and, and myself will come back and reach out to you and you can have follow-up sessions, you know, deeper dive into the areas that you're interested in. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Poon, for the great sharing on Singpass and um, the entire suite of products. So uh, now, let's have Barry from the GovTech Health Search team to discuss the role of um, digital identity for authenticating and verifying this digital certification. Uh, Barry, please go ahead. Hi, a very good evening to everyone. Um, I'm, I'm Barry from the Government Digital Services Group within GovTech. I hate the dis distributed ledger technology team uh, that have brought you open certs and health certs, both of which are powered by the open attestation framework developed by GovTech and has been open source for all to use. And today I will be sharing on the topic of digital identity for digital health certs. Have you thought about a day in the future where you are the custodian of your own health data and able to share it to parties that require this data? For example, to other doctors for a second opinion or perhaps for submission for insurance claims. Um, health search provides an insight to this reality, allowing for individuals to share their pre departure test results and vaccination records uh, to authorities during their travels. Uh, some of you might ask, why do we need health certs? Since the onset of COVID-19, there have been many reports of uh, around the world of fake medical test reports surfacing at border checkpoints in an attempt to bypass health screening measures. These digital documents are temper-proof and allow a verifier to confidently trust the data upon successful verification. This effectively addresses the issue of document fraud. Moreover, health search being a digital document allows a user to submit this document in advance of their travels for inspection and verification by the relevant authorities. In today's session, we will cover three key, uh, three main topics. Uh, firstly, we'll talk about the existing use case, and then I'll go in depth to talk a bit more on how the document verification is performed. And then uh, I will just share some of the future possibilities with this technology. To start off, I'd like to share with you the health search use case, which leverages on the Singpass mobile app for a strong identity assurance. So how does it work, right? Um, there are two types of health search currently. Uh, we broadly segregate them into two groups. The first being the pre-departure test results, and secondly, the vaccination search. As there are a few hundred clinics in Singapore uh, that are recognized to perform pre-departure tests, we had opted for a decentralized issuance approach where the clinics issue a test result that is digitally signed. This test result is then required to be endorsed on the notarized portal before it can be used for travel. The endorsement process is to facilitate the verification at the border so that the verified party only needs to identify the endorser, in this case, uh, MOH Singapore. For this case, the identity of the person undergoing tests is vetted at the clinic, similar to um, you know, a, a typical visit to the clinic where a person's identity is verified prior to the consultation with the doctor. For the case of vaccination health search, users have to furnish their identity in the form of a SingPass login. And their, before their records and their dependence records, if any, uh, will be displayed. This allows us then to bind the identity of the requester to their respective vac vaccination records prior to issuance. Upon successful issuance, a copy of the health cert is sent to the owner's SingPass mobile inbox, as well as via email to the designated email address which has been input by the user. Right? Okay. The document verification can be initiated by scanning the QR code that is issued together with the health cert. This is a mock-up of how it will be displayed in the SingPass mobile inbox. Upon request by the authorities, uh, example at the immigration by immigration officers, this health cert can QR can be presented for scanning. The verification can also be performed by any camera enabled mobile device. This is a screenshot demonstrating the results following a successful verification of a health cert. Um, during the verification process, the web, 
authentication at verify.gov.sg uh, performs three kinds of checks on the document. Firstly, it checks that the document had been issued and had not been subsequently revoked, right? Post issuance. Secondly, the verifier also checks if a document had been tampered with. This is done by computing uh, the hash of the document's contents to derive what we term as the target hash, which is this value you see on the left. This calculated value should then be matching to the value that's documented within the health set to, to indicate that the document has not been tampered with. Thirdly, the verifier checks that the document issuer had been identified. It starts off by reading the issuer's domain name, which is also documented within the health set, and proceeds to perform a DNS text query record. All right. And this is to confirm the ownership of this identity, as only an authorized officer from within the organization can update the DNS text record. The certificate contents can then be displayed via this, what we call a decentralized render, which is able to make sense of the document contents and present the data in a human readable format, which is what you see on the right, right? The benefit of this approach is that there isn't a need for a proprietary QR code reader application in order to understand and display the health search contents. In this extract of the raw health search document on the left, we can see the three fields, uh, namely NRIC, passport number, and name. Uh, it's not so reader friendly on the one from the raw document, but in the end, what is rendered to the user is what you see on the right. It's very easy to read, right? In a reader, a reader friendly format. Right. So now we will look at some of the future possibilities, you know, harnessing this technology. I would like to ask if you have ever had to make an insurance claim after visiting a hospital. Great if you didn't encounter this use case, but if you had, you will know that this request can be quite elaborate. Firstly, you will have to request, make a request to the medical records office and through the process, filling up some forms for administrative purposes. After which you have to wait for a few days before the records will be available for collection. What if, in the future, medical reports, discharge summaries, diagnoses, and test reports can be issued directly to you? You can then store these documents in a mobile application, which then makes it very portable. The process simply involves the user uploading the document onto the mobile application. Uh, in, in the back end, behind the scenes, the mobile application can then proceed to verify the document for authenticity. After that's completed, the identity of the document owner is then matched against the identity registered on the mobile app. Uh, implicitly, this also assumes that the KYC process during the onboarding onto the mobile application uh, has taken place. Once the document has been successfully saved into the mobile app, the user then has the option to share the required documents to required parties. And this could include, for example, insurance companies for purposes of claim submission or sending the, the data to another doctor for a second opinion. The receiving parties of these documents also then have the ability to independently verify the authenticity of these documents um, via the verification methods described in the earlier slides. So before I end the presentation, uh, I would like to invite you to scan this QR code you see here on the lower right corner to experience for yourself uh, how easy this verification process uh, can be. Right, so I will hold this slide for a few seconds uh, while you scan this QR code. Yep. With that, I've come to the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thanks, thanks, Barry, for discussing health certs and um, the significance of SingPass in it. So uh, maybe now have Cheng Wei to share about Accreditify's latest launch, uh, Accreditify Start, that ensures our safe return to work with the integration of SingPass. Cheng Wei, the floor is yours. 
Thanks, Joyce. <clears throat> Okay. Um, all good. Okay. Um, thanks, Poon. Thanks, Barry, for sharing. And um, finally, a lot of what I'm going to share later on in the next 10 minutes is a combination of what uh, Poon and Barry have shared. So pardon me if I re repeat some stuff, but um, I'm really going to share with you how we um, apply. I saw some questions, but it's how we applied um, on the ground, both the technology provided by Poon's team as well as by Barry's team. Um, let me start with um, Accreditify as a company. Um, fundamentally, Accreditify is about taking data to create verifiable documents. And then these verifiable documents are basically tamper-proof and traceable back to the source. So if you get a, a document from us, um, you know exactly where it came from and you know that nothing has changed. So this was very much made possible um, with Barry's team um, coming up with the open attestation framework and, and thereafter an extension to that uh, with what we call the open cert and the health cert. So Credify is really about digital transformation, building trust, and sharing privacy and security, and lastly, to enable data portability. A little bit more about us. So far, we've done uh, more than 7 million verifications. Um, across different use cases, which, which I can share a little bit more of. Um, we actually started in the education industry, primarily on academic credentials, like a diploma, degree, transcripts, and so on and so forth. Um, then we extended it across different skills and competencies, but very much still in that whole you know, education space. Until 2020, we had uh, an extension to what we do in the healthcare space um, to include, include things like your um, COVID-19 discharge memos. Basically, if you get um, diagnosed with COVID-19 and you recover, you get a discharge memo from us, which in a way is also uh, uh, implied immunity. Then we also worked on a few things such as the um, pre-departure travel memo. Um, and, and, and later on, I'll share a little bit more about a credit by start. Um, so these 7 million verifications were made available from over 600 credentials that we have issued um, today because it's very healthcare centric conversation to, um, to share. We have about 900 clinics now sitting across eight different markets. Um, quoting our minister, we are moving towards a truly endemic state, um, which in layman term means, you know, living with the virus. So could COVID-19 become just, you know, as, as, as simple as um, um, a daily flu, maybe? Um, but till we reach that stage, we are kind of in, in a transition period where we need to continue being um, um, vigilant. We need to have, um, we actually need to empower um, companies and corporates on the ground to have the capability to, to manage this kind of situation. Um, so, in short, we started a Credify Start, which is an end-to-end -end, uh, um, solution that brings on board upstream and downstream partners in order to provide corporates an easy way to enable their, com their, their company employees you know, to return to work safely. Um, so our partners actually spent all the way from the healthcare providers, the test kit providers, um, to ourselves, providing the, the mechanism for corporate dashboarding, um, all the way downstream to um, people like um, SAP, uh, which is like a, a, a HR management system in order to integrate that whole testing to surveillance and, and monitoring process. We also help to simplify the um, process in terms of um, compliance, where companies such as your hospitality, f &B, they need to report to the relevant authorities like HPV and, and MOH on the healthcare status of their employees so that they can allow them to return safely. Um, many, 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 many key points, uh, key pain points that we have identified as we speak to more people on the ground. Um, but today I'm going to focus on, on the most you know, important one, which is really a, a a huge difficulty when it comes to identity management on the ground. Um, and specifically, how do you tag um, a test result 
with the person, right? Um, today, if you go for a PCR test, um, um, ART test, um, so on and so forth, um, we need to match that test result to the um, person and then to enable the corporate to actually know that this person is safe to come back or to actually be able to roster, to schedule and to ensure that, you know, whomever is supposed to take their test can take their test on time. So uh, we decided, you know, we have to come up with not just a solution that works, but a solution that is integrated um, digitally with different solutions that can enable the process to be as seamless, as secure, um, and as accurate as we can. So the first thing that came to our mind is of course to leverage on our relationship with um, Assurity and, and SyncPass. Um, we've been working with uh, SyncPass for, for a while now in, in all the other products that we have launched. Um, but then very naturally when we started a credit five start, um, SyncPass login was one of the key feature that, that we knew we had to put in place. To give you a glimpse of you know, how important that is, um, when we designed the whole flow without SyncPass, it's pretty complicated, right? You, you, you come on board to our web app, you gotta sign up an account. After you sign up an account, I send you an email to say, you know, is this really you? Um, after you receive the email, you tell me, yeah, this is really me, you authenticate. Then only then you can sign in. And to make it a lot more complicated, after you sign in, you got to fill in like um, 20, 30 questions so that I know who you are, right? Because if I don't know who you, who you are, I cannot take your, your, your results from our upstream partners to you. Um, big problem, takes up a lot of time. Um, people start dropping out from the, from the customer journey flow, get complaints from our clients. Um, then naturally, <laughs> SyncPass and, and my info, you know, came in, uh, um, um, I, I would say in, in a way to save us from, from all these trouble and to really streamline all these different steps to a simple two steps, right? You, you On our platform now, you can straight away um, sign up with SyncPass and sign up with MyInfo. We get to extract your data in a secure and, 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 and regulated and accurate way from Poon's team. And then uh, Poon's team sends us we then secure it within our system, enable you to have an account, and all subsequent logins are through the secure login with SyncPass. Um, then very nicely after you take your test um, from one of our partner like ART or PCR, we match that result for you, and then we issue you a, a temper-proof, verifiable um, test result that you know uh, again take take taking various um, hard work. Issue the, the temper proof health cert, which you can then um, pass it on to any third party for verification purposes. Um, let me see if I have any side. Yeah, so um, that, that, that's, that's what I have to share for today. I'm, I'm happy to take any, any questions that you guys may have and, and happy participating in the panel session later. Thank you, Chen Lei, for the great introduction. Uh, to accreditify that as well as um, your support for uh, our GovTech teams as well. So um, at this point, I'm sure all of us have uh, many, many interesting questions for our speakers. Uh, before we open the Q&A segment, uh, I'd like to invite uh, all of our speakers as well as um, participants. Uh, if you'd like to turn on your video camera, we can do a quick uh, photo taking session um, since we are not doing physical sessions uh, yet. So... Um, Perhaps if everyone would like to turn on their cameras to be caught on, uh, yes, uh, to be caught on well camera, we can do so. Uh, so I see all of our speakers are camera ready. Uh, okay, we can start taking um, a few photos first at the moment. Okay, so uh, if the photos are taken, uh, do let me know uh, and I'll open the session. Okay, great. Uh, my team has said that um, the photo taking is um, done. So uh, let's quickly open the session now. Um, we can see that there are a lot, a lot of interesting questions. Uh, we will try our best to uh, answer all of the questions uh, at the moment. So um, perhaps let me start with uh, Poon. 
I think uh, you would be able to answer some of the uh, queries that our attendees have. Yeah, sure thing. So, yes, thanks a lot. Ahead. Yeah, thanks a lot, Joyce. Uh, we have quite a number of questions okay. here. I think uh, I'll do my best to answer uh, most of them. And uh, please, you know, Barry, feel free to chip in at any point in time. Uh, I think for the first two questions from John, uh, uh, are all related to Mindful. So allow me to give, give a bit more background to Mindful. Uh, while I did show the user journey earlier, uh, allow me to clarify. When it comes to Mindful, the user consent for sharing of data it is at that point in time. Meaning to say that instead of manually filling up, for example, those 10 fields on an online registration, you know, instead of doing that, through my info, you consent sharing those exact 10 fields, right? But again, it is from government sources. So you auto fill all those 10 fields, uh, just like how you would manually fill up that account opening on, for example, DBS. And now instead of doing that through my info, you merely automate that. You merely automate all those 10 fields, the population of all those 10 fields. Uh, so really what I'm simply trying to say here is, when it comes to data sharing, it is really no different from you filling up manually because through my info, it is automated. So when it comes to the partner, to the partner, the receiving part, the receiving organization, in this case, DDS, uh, how they were to safeguard all that data, this is actually guided by the PDPA, the Personal Data Protection Act. Uh, so really, when it comes to my info, we merely automate that form filling with government, with government verified sources, but more importantly, only upon user consent at that point in time, uh, that data is uh, passed through, it's automated, right? Uh, then thereafter, you know, that partner will then have to abide by PDPA to safeguard your information, so on and so forth. Uh, so I hopefully with that uh, background, I can better ans uh, answer the first question. How long do companies and agencies have my information for my info once I authorize them? And if so, can I at any time revoke their permissions to retrieve uh, that information at any time? So the answer to that question is, this is exactly, you know, this is exactly this, the same treatment will be just like how you manually sign up for that credit card. That bank will, will keep your data. True my info is the same thing. Uh, so under PDPA, you know, depending on, you know, what conditions are uh, that you fall under, you can possibly, you know, uh, get the partner to, or rather get that bank to forget your information, uh, depending on how PDP applies to that. So I hope that I answered your question, John, but you know, if, if I've not answered your question uh, to your satisfaction, please feel free to you know, catch up with us by email. To your second question, could we specify the time period we allow companies to access our mindful information, or is there such a, a feature upcoming? Again, uh, as, as I've uh, shared earlier in the background, the, the, the sharing is at that point in time. You auto, you know, fill up that particular form. Uh, thereafter, that information resides with that particular uh, partner of ours, DBS Bank or any of our partners. Uh, so thereafter, so that is again uh, up to uh, guided by PDPA. Uh, quickly moving on to another question from Elizabeth. Elizabeth was simply asking, are there any initiatives to help the less digital savvy, such as the elderly to adopt the use of digital services? Uh, Elizabeth, you asked, you are spot on. Uh, we continue as GovTech and many of our partners, we work with our partners, uh, not, just, not just to digitally empower their services, but also to reach out uh, to the less savvy, not just you know, the elderly. You know, so really, you know, again, we are open you know, to collaborations to better reach out to uh, the elderly, the less digital savvy. We have a number of programs, uh, if the rest of uh, my colleagues can share the tech car keys, you know, we have different uh, channels to reach out to the less digital savvy. So this is an ongoing effort and we recognize that, you know, we are not in the ideal state yet, uh, but again, through this pandemic, uh, there are opportunities for us to, you know, better bring uh, the less savvy on board. Uh, quickly to, to that question, yes. Huh? Oh, no, no, sorry, sorry. I wanted to thank you, Poon, for the very, very good uh, explanations for our questions. Uh, please, please go ahead. Yeah, please feel free to interrupt me, right? <laughs> so, quite a number from, from John, but um, I'm happy, man. If people ask questions, means they're really interested, right? Uh, for John, for the next question, right? Uh, this is something great question. For signing certificates, will they be stored in NDI's secure storage or stored in 
on our mobile phones. I installed a mobile phone, blah, 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 so on and so forth. Uh, we are happy to share. Well, I can't share too much details, but John, uh, it's a combination of both. Right? While I'm not in a position to share specific details, uh, what we can share is every effort is made, you know, is put in place to make sure that what we are offering here is secure. Certainly, you know, we can't be perfect. We know that, you know, as with all digital solutions, there is, it's, it's an iterative process. So we're happy to, you know, if you're interested, we can take this offline uh, to understand your concerns and hopefully share a bit more, right? So we, we note that, you know, security is paramount, right? The last thing that we want is to offer a whole nation service uh, that is not secure, right? So hopefully, oh, okay, another one from John. Okay, uh, when companies use SingPass to authenticate, they receive an array of information about our credentials. Uh, not necessary, uh, specific to SingPass authentication, uh, depending on our partner's use case, uh, it is either uh, only the person's NIC is shared, provided that use case justifies for it. For example, you know, uh, logging in to, for example, OCBC Bank uh, through SingPass, uh, because OCBC Bank requires you know, that uh, person to be authenticated to a high fidelity. And that is why uh, the justification for use of NIC is, is there which is why SingPass will readily uh, share the NIC upon successful authentication, of course, in an encrypted payload. Right, for other use cases, the less, you know, less identity assurance, re less, requires less identity assurance, uh, another, uh, another identifier will be shared, the unique user ID. So again, this is something that uh, we're happy to share and go into detail for interested parties, right? So hope that answers your questions. Uh, another one from John, or oh, how does NDI Face verification compared to Apple Face ID. Ah, oh, excellent question. Uh, you see, the, the, the biggest, the, 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 the value proposition for NDI's face verification here, unlike Apple ID, right? Apple ID, you are actually registering against your phone's, your phone's information. Meaning say you register your face on your phone. With NDI's face verification, we are actually going, we are verifying against government sources, in this case, ICN. ICA and MOM. And the great thing about face verification, when used as a service, right, the, one of the key benefits for any of our partners is there's no need for you to, you know, register your users. Because any, any organization out there, if they were to set up their own face verification service, the first hurdle you need to get past is to build up a database of, of biometrics information. Meaning to say that each and every of the customers, they need to register and painstakingly, you know, take selfies of their customers to build up the database. And to, and to then, you know, to, wish to facilitate their own face verification service. But using NDI or SingPass face verification, that, that is, that there's no need, there's zero onboarding required because we are verifying against our national database. Okay, thank Did you, you. Uh, yes. Maybe we can invite Barry to take the next question yes. on adding the vaccination status as a card into Apple Wallet. Ah, yes. Yeah, sure. Barry, thank you, okay. Poon. Yeah. Uh, so, I think uh, I just want to say that we are closely monitoring this space, right, um, at this time. Uh, and uh, at the moment, I'm unable to comment if this uh, option to uh, add this the health search onto the Apple, Apple Wallet will eventually be offered, right? Uh, but meanwhile, I'm actually have, very happy to share that uh, the health search will, are actually sent uh, to all uh, SingPass eligible users, right? And you can find the, a copy of that in your SingPass mobile inbox. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Barry. Uh, okay, before we move on, um, we actually have someone who raised their hands, um, Gil or Sun Liang. Um, if you have any questions, you can uh, let our speakers know in the Q&A panel as well, yeah, just to let you know. Yeah. Uh, okay, I guess... Um, do our other speakers uh, want to also weigh in? Uh, because we have really um, quite a lot of questions uh, sent by everyone here. Thanks for the support. Yeah, I think I better leave the chance, you know, I end up. <laughs> so, John, feel free to reach out to us separately. I think um, yeah, best we, we answer some other uh, questions too. Yep. So uh, for John and anyone, anyone else who wants to uh, reach out to Poon and the team as well, uh, I've also sent the um, email that you can reach them at uh, in the chat so you can just uh, grab the address from there um yep so uh maybe Zheng Wei or uh, Mikim if you have any uh questions that uh you think are interesting and you would like to weigh yeah. in 
Maybe I just want to add on to what Poon has talked about the uh, answer to Elizabeth's question about the digitally savvy users elderly. So maybe I also want to add that um, it's not just only uh, Caltech. In fact, actually we are working with partners like Credify and many of the organization that they themselves actually provide uh, services to the uh, digital, less uh, digital savvy group. So uh, in fact, actually some of them actually can come up with very creative and innovative ideas to help this group of people to use it uh, easily. So I uh, just energy. Um, SingPass API and our digital, um, national digital identity is a platform enabler to help them so able to deliver this vision for them. Yeah. Thanks, Mekin. Uh, okay, we have another question that uh, I think would be really good for Barry to answer. So um, this question is from uh, Ing Tat. Uh, can we use SingPass to apply for jobs in the future too? So um, somewhere where we can upload uh, our resume. Yep. So uh, this feature is actually already available on MyCareersFuture.gov.sg. Uh, so basically, you just have to log in with your SingPass, and then uh, it also allows uh, you know skills matching, uh, uploading of resumes uh, in in your in your journey for job searching, right? Uh, so the skills matching portion will actually help you find uh, in not just uh, direct matches uh, as well as also like uh, parallel matches right, based on the skill sets. Thank you. Thanks, Barry. Uh, so because we have so many questions, uh, I'll let our speakers have a bit of time to go through um, the Q&A panel. I guess in the meantime, uh, I also have another question of my own uh, for Barry. So um, actually, why would the vaccination health certs uh, not be issued to everyone um, instead of having like uh, individuals requesting through the notarized portal? Right. Uh, so... For this, right, basically the intention for uh, vaccination health sites, they are intended for use uh, for the travel use case. But that's the current uh, only use case, right? Um, for purposes of, let's say, uh, showing statuses of vaccination, let's say within a domestic uh, setting, for example, entering a restaurant, uh, we have other apps such as uh, Trace Together and Health Hub to display those uh, vaccination status. Thanks. Thanks, Barry, for answering my question. Uh, we also have another question from um, Ting Lee. So uh, I guess this one um, would be Poon's field of expertise, but for the rest of our speakers, please also feel free to jump in. Uh, so from Ting Lee, is, that, uh, is there any screening or approval process uh, before my company or my clients can implement any of the SingPass APIs? Yeah. Ting Lee, thanks for the question. Uh, the answer is yes. We have a simple... Um, you know, uh, process uh, where you simply submit your use case based on the template. Uh, this is all available on our portal. Uh, so that whole process is uh, straightforward. It is guided. Uh, so the answer to your question is yes, uh, because what we do uh, as part of uh, uh, us offering our SingPass services, any of our APIs, the first thing that we do is to understand your use case, to make sure that it's relevant. Right, especially for my info, the kind of data that you're asking, is it relevant to a use case, so on and so forth. So we'll go through a simple, you know, uh, one to two week approval process. If there's anything, we'll come back to you uh, to help you, you know, get your use case approved. And thereafter, immediately you can start uh, your integration with our SingPass APIs. Hope that answers your question. Uh, I guess a related question is by Sue. Um, is the use of a the, your API free for companies? <laughs> I'll take that question. Uh, great question. In fact, I sh we should have started out with this. The answer is yes, right? Uh, we're happy to share that, you know, what we are offering here as part of our smart nation is to offer all our API services uh, free, free for all private sector use. And you will know that my info has been free for uh, ever since it started four years ago, Sync Pass authentication ever since it started two years ago. Uh, but um, for the other, for the other um, uh, products, we will also continue to offer it free. But what we'd like to highlight here is that uh, come the end of March 2021, uh, we will start uh, applying charges to the earlier services, uh, the more mature ones like MyInfo and SingPass authentication, while the rest like face verification, sign, that will continue to be free for another few years. Uh, the reason for doing so is um, when it comes to when it comes to charges, we have worked out 
We have done a number of industry consultations with our existing partners uh, to make sure that uh, whatever they were charging is reasonable, it is palatable. Uh, again, it is really something that uh, we want to continue to do to not just provide as a service, uh, but to also you know, provide some, uh, because with, with charges, uh, there is a set of liabilities, there's service level agreements. So this is something that uh, we think is fair and through our consultation, uh, a lot of our partners also agree. Yeah, just to clarify, the date is next year, 1st April, 2022, not this year. <laughs> oh, pardon me. I'm still living in 2022, like what we can say. Right? Yeah. Of course, we are happy to share that, you know, to help SMEs, uh, there will always be a free tier. There's tier 0, tier 1, tier 2. So for tier 0, you know, based on the number of transactions, you know, uh, you know per month, you know, a certain number will continue to be free, regardless of the size of you know, your organization. This is re to really help, you know, our early adopters, our smaller players to continue to enjoy this service. Because after all, when we're offering national digital identity, we are seen here as a national digital utility. You know, just like how oil and gas is important to your brick and mortar, you know, with NDI, it's so important uh, to digitally empower all organizations here as part of Smart Nation. Just to add that, uh, we'll say that the majority of the services will be in the free tier. Because actually our objective is not really to earn money, but actually to help you to uh, help you and you and your business to able to actually deliver uh, online services uh, securely and conveniently to your customers. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Miki, and thanks a lot, Poon. Um, maybe if uh, there are any other questions um, that our speakers would like to answer. I'll, I'll give you a bit of time to go through. I know we have a lot of questions that come in. I, th I think we should have another uh, stack X for me and John. <laughs> 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 but it's really interesting, John. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, perhaps uh, in the meantime, uh, just, just to give um, all of our speakers a bit of a break, uh, can we direct uh, the time over to Zheng Wei? I know that you've shared um, a lot of interesting things about a credify start. Um, perhaps... Since uh, our GovTech teams are here as well, maybe you can share with us a little bit about your experience with um, integrating SingPass uh, in, in the course of your work. I'm uh, working and uh, putting it around. <laughs> <laughs> we can uh, but, sign uh, off with you, uh, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I think we are uh, one of the earlier private sector to come aboard. Um, to be honest, we were quite excited when it first happened. Um, I would say that before we started the whole process, we were a bit apprehensive, right? Everybody heard about, you know, how, how the government works, or the red tape. We were very afraid that we'll be at the back, back, back of the queue <laughs> as a small company and, and we will never even be um, identified as a candidate to come aboard. But um, when we, between us submitting the application to us, actually getting someone to talk to us, I think it was not even one or two weeks time. Um, back then, Assurity was still, I believe, just been off from GovTech or something. And then um, the Assurity team really, really came about to help us quite quickly. They came down to our office, um, shared with us the different products that they have. I'm not sure if they are still doing it now because there's a lot more demand now. Um, the different products that they have, the different products that they are going to come up with. And then um, we started the integration with quite a bit of hand-holding from their side. So we got a lot of support. Um, questions that we asked were answered by the BD manager assigned to us quite quickly. And it's not just on the uh, customer relationship side. They are also very strong on the technical side. So in between, we had quite a number of uh, technical questions and technical difficulty because we decided as a tech company, uh, uh, we decided to do it ourselves, right? We didn't, of course there were, uh, I would say uh, uh, SI-ish kind of company. They are, they are available for you. Uh, Assurity can introduce you to them where they can help you with the process. But uh, we decided to do it ourselves. La. So quite a bit of technical difficulties along the way, but uh, nothing major, um, just clarifications and they were handled quite quickly and promptly by the Assurity team. Um, so I mean, I mean, for those who, who are afraid of um, coming on board, um, I think we can give you the assurance. Um, and if Assurity's team is busy, we can also help <laughs> you with it. Uh, but you'll get the right support. Uh, you'll get the right uh, uh, technical documentation. And on top of that, 
for now it's free lah. I think <laughs> just just use it. <laughs> um, it's it's help us save quite a bit of cost and 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 better customer experience as well. Yeah. So maybe I, yeah. So maybe I let uh, want to add that um, we are still uh holding actually a lot of webinars. Uh, typically, we actually work with uh, partners like association or the organization that have a members. So we have actually regular webinar, actually we share about the products. Then when there's an interested party or organization requires to ask to actually follow up, actually we'll do one-on-one -on -one with the company and handhold them. And in fact, actually our website and the developer portal, there are many resources in there. We actually do a lot of video, give you some step-by-step -step guide. So if you go through that and with our, uh, our help, I think most company okay. will be able to do it themselves. Yeah. Thanks, Mickey, and thanks, Zhong Wei, for um, the really great vote of confidence with working with <laughs> us. <laughs> yeah. So um, perhaps before we um, start to wrap up this session, uh, may I ask if uh, Barry, you would like to also um, share something about your experiences as well? Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> so I think it's been quite a journey for us for health mm. since, uh, you know, because uh, we have open source the technology and work together closely with uh, industry partners. Um, and, you know, we are very happy to share today that actually there are already, um, as of today, uh, 13 uh, health set providers uh, that are operating uh, across the globe, um, representing uh, about 420 plus medical institutions, right, uh, helping to issue certificates that are being used uh, for travel, uh, not just up from Singapore to other countries, but from other countries to other countries, right. <laughs> so uh, we have there some issuance from countries like Canada, Denmark, Hong Kong, Indonesia, UK, and even the US as well. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Barry. Uh, so we hope that um, all of this will go even further as we uh, work with our industry partners uh, more and more. So um, perhaps we will start to wrap up the session. Um, but before that, like what Miki mentioned, um, there are really a lot of resources that we have uh, on the developers portal. So um, let me just share it in uh, the chat again here. And then um, if you do need any more information, uh, you can just go into this uh, links to find out more or um, like what we mentioned, you can reach out to us as well. So um, yep, here are just some of the links that we have. Uh, and uh, so thank you everyone for um, all of your questions. And uh, I'm sure that uh, our speakers enjoyed uh, answering your queries and um, clarifying uh, about their fields of expertise as well. So um, very, very big thank you to our speakers, uh, Mui Kim, Poon, Barry and Zheng Wei for the candid sharing. And um, we also appreciate everyone here tonight for joining us. So um, do tell us how the webinar went by uh, scanning the QR code on the left to give us your feedback now. And um, the link will also be shared in the chat, uh, just in case you don't want to scan the QR code. And um, like what I mentioned before, you can join us at the StackX Telegram group to connect um, with the rest of the community. So um, you can scan the QR code on the right now to join us. So um, as usual, the link will also be shared in the chat. So um, in case anyone else um, needs these links, uh, here they are in the chat. Yep. So uh, we hope you found this sharing as interesting as we did. Uh, even for those of us working in GovTech, we really learn a lot from um, what everyone shared here today. So uh, that wraps up our session for tonight. Uh, thank you and see you at our next StackX event uh, later this month on GCC. So um, you can get updated when registration is live when you join our StackX Meetup platform and our Telegram group chat. And uh, to everyone who haven't had dinner yet, please have a good dinner. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.